Welcome to the Online Success Journey Podcast, your opportunity to discover and learn from entrepreneurs like yourself. This is not your typical podcast, but a place where you can get the real story and find out how real people encounter speed bumps and detours, but journey through to find success. Now here's your host for the Online Success Journey Podcast, Patience. Hello and welcome to Online Success Journey. This is episode 34. Are you ready to join the clan? Today we have Mark Mahwini. Mark's mission is to help coaches build strong businesses. He has a passion for entrepreneurship, having started a number of businesses in his life and growing one to a hundred employees. After becoming a coach, he saw the struggles that the coaches face while trying to build their businesses and decided to do something about it. He launched a natural born coaches, a data podcast where he interviews successful coaches to share their advice and work with coaches in his accelerate for clients one-on-one and group programs. Hello, Mark. Hi, Patience. Thanks for having me here. Thank you for coming. I know the clan here is anxious to hear your story, so let's get started with the basics. Can you tell my clan a little bit about you, your background, what you did before you started your online business? Well, I was born June 27th, 1978. No, I won't go back that far. Don't worry. <laughs> my, um, I was in real estate uh, right out of university. Uh, when I was 21 years old, I got started in real estate. So I did that for over a decade. And um, I thought I was going to be in real estate all my life. And then uh, life had a way of throw, uh, it threw me a curveball like it has a way of often doing. And I went through a business closure. So um, I had a lot of good years in real estate and I had some bad years where I actually had two business closures, which weren't fun, but things happened for a reason. So with the rest, I was coming out of real estate that I thought, okay, what do I want to be doing uh, with the rest of my life? And I was really helped by several coaches and mentors who helped me get back on my feet and showed me the power of coaching, what it can do in a person's life. And the answer is staring me in the face a couple of years after that. I thought, wow, uh, coaching has been so beneficial for me. I want to get in, out there and help people the way that I've been helped by coaches as well. So I uh, started coaching. I'm in my third year for coaching now. Uh, people think I've been in it longer because they see me all over. I'm, you know, getting my name out there. But I've, I tell people you can get going very quickly coaching or other online businesses just with the power of social media. If you're disciplined and uh, if you know if you're working hard at it, you can definitely shorten that learning curve. So, um, yeah, that's kind of my life in a nutshell up to now. I'm having a lot of fun and uh, love what I do. So that's the name of the game. Wow, that's a great background, Mark. So help us connect with you. Uh, tell us one thing, a business or a personal thing that we want to know about you, even if we've been following you for the last three years. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> a personal thing. Well, I'm a, uh, I'm a twin. That's something that's uh, kind of different. I have a twin brother. I sat on his head for nine months. And uh, my brother, Matt, is actually um, involved in my business as well because he – does podcast editing uh, for for podcasters. He handles editing and the stuff that us podcasters hate to do, or most of us do, hate to do. So uh, he has a, a, a business, it's called Pod Assist. There's podassist.com, I'll put a, a plug in there. But um, I get to work with my twin brother because he, he edits my podcast and h- handles a lot of other shows. Uh, so that's what a lot of people don't know about me. Anything else, uh, I love Elvis Presley, a huge fan of The King. And when I was a kid, I wanted to either play baseball for the Blue Jays or be a treasure hunter, professional treasure hunter like Indiana Jones. Wow. <laughs> wow. You and your twin, you don't separate. You are still twins already in business, still twins. Wow. We sound we sound alike. He he could come on the line now and you wouldn't be able to tell that we switched places because we sound identical. Now, that being said, we don't look the same, you know, anymore. He's got different hairstyle. I've got, you know, a beard. So that's that's why I have the beard so people can tell us apart. But uh, I mean, it's a lot of fun uh, when you have a, a twin, when you get to do. That's a great thing with online businesses. You, you can work with your with people you enjoy working with and you're not restricted by geography or anything like that, like in the past. So my coaching business is completely completely virtual. It's, it's all online. I don't meet people in person. I don't do coffee shop coaching meetings. It's all done via Skype and Zoom and everything online. 
Wow. Okay, Mark. Now you've been in business for the last three years. People think that, oh, you are now successful. Everything's good. Did you have any failures or setbacks while setting up your podcast business? No, everything went completely smoothly and never any stumbles. I'm right. being sarcastic. Yeah, that, that was sarcasm. Uh, like anything, when you're when you're going to do anything big and worth doing, then there's going to be challenges and struggles. So I went through the usual um, entrepreneurial hiccups that every entrepreneur has. And uh, the analogy that I use for myself, I've been this way all my life. I'm kind of like the typical entrepreneur that jumps off a cliff and hopes that he can build a plane on the way down, you know, before he hits the ground. And luckily with podcasting and coaching, my other stuff, I was able to build the plane and get it in the air, but not without the usual hiccups that can pop up. So um, you just got to keep plugging away as an entrepreneur. It's, it's, if it was smooth and easy, everyone would do it and then it wouldn't be any fun. Okay. I know the clan is anxious to hear about how you got through this in part two, but for now, tell us, what do you think is the reason for your online success so far? A uh, big part of it for me is consistency. Uh, I am working on my business every day. I'm not the Tim Ferriss four hour work week guy. <laughs> but <laughs> that would be nice, but I'm working a little bit more than four hours a week. And I would probably go crazy if I was working four hours a week. You know, I'd, I'd be on the beach for a little while sipping margaritas and then I'd be like, okay, I got to get back to work. Um, consistency has been the big thing. I've, I tried lots of things found out what worked, found out what didn't work. And then I consistently did and do the, the things at work. And I do them every day like a robot. So it rain or shine, whether I'm sick with the flu, whatever, I'm doing certain things uh, with it. And your results can add up very quickly by doing it that way. It doesn't take long for the things to snowball and they can really get going. And I think where most people make a mistake is they – get discouraged when they don't see results happen quickly. So they'll try something for a few weeks or a few months. They're not getting the results that they were hoping, and then they stop doing it. But really, in a lot of cases, it's kind of like Napoleon Hill wrote about, they're stopping three feet from gold. If they just keep going, they would probably get the results rolling with it. So I think a lot of entrepreneurs, and especially online entrepreneurs, aren't consistent enough. They expect too much to happen too quickly. And it takes a bit of time, you know, for your uh, things to kick in, your, uh, for you to reap the rewards of what you're doing. But then uh, you see, like Tim Ferriss, for our work, that's what we have been told that uh, within Saturdays, you start the internet and uh, in Saturdays, you'll be ripping the world. So what do you say? <laughs> <laughs> Did you, well, what... <laughs> it happen that way? Your side, have you met someone who's doing like that? They start internet to done tomorrow. They are really enjoying Magritte on the beach. I see a lot of people claiming that they do. <laughs> the problem with the internet, it's a wild west. So I could come on here and I could uh, tell you patience. I, um, I just did a launch yesterday and, uh, I just, uh, in one day I made $1.8 million, you know, and, uh, Who's going to, you know, who's going to say, no, Mark, you didn't, although people probably would. So I'm not saying people aren't working a four hour work week or these tremendous results, but I'd be very surprised if Tim Ferriss works just four hours a week. In fact, I would bet bet the farm that he works a heck of a lot more hours because he seems to enjoy what he's doing. So it's especially in those first couple of years. I mean, as time goes on, you set up the systems, you can scale, you get people on your team, then it's definitely more manageable and, and it's a good goal to work towards. But I think too many entrepreneurs, online entrepreneurs in that first year want to get to the four hour work week. And if you're only working four hours a week on your dream, it's hard to do what you have to do. Um, like anything, are there outliers? Are there special circumstances where people are able to do it? Yeah, of course. But I'm saying for the vast majority, 99% of people, they're having to work a lot more than four hours a week when they get started to be successful. Okay. How did you come up with the Natural Bond Coaches, Coaches podcast? Well, um, I'd been listening to podcasts since probably 2006, 2007, which was fairly early. Um, they were really came about a few years before that, but not a lot of people knew about podcasts. And um, I, I was always, I was the type I would listen to podcasts, but never, I didn't have a clue how to do a podcast, how to do, host one myself. And back in 2014, 
I saw there was a need in the marketplace. Um, I was, I work specifically with coaches. That's my niche. I, that all my clients are coaches. Anyone else who comes into my world, I re, that isn't a coach. I refer them off to someone who can help them, but I work just with coaches. Those are my, my people. And I re, saw that there were no podcasts for, to help coaches grow their businesses. So there were plenty of entrepreneurial podcasts that were talking more about general businesses, but not specifically for coaches. And I knew that building a coaching business was difficult because I had gone through all that where I was banging my head against the wall and being frustrated and feeling like quitting some days and, and just wanting to uh, just go crazy. And I said, I, I want to have a podcast that helps coaches so they're not going through those same pains and frustrations. So we launched a show November 2014. Uh, as of today, we're very, as we're recording this, close to episode 400. Uh, so March the 9th, episode 400 goes live. And um, yeah, I mean, it's been a lot of fun. I wouldn't have done 400 episodes to date if it wasn't fun. Wow. Mark, tell us is the secrets that you see that the that we can do or the coaches who are listening to you to avoid the stress and banter within the industry if you are a coach how do you do that the only way to avoid the stress is listen to natural born coaches every single day and hire mark <laughs> as your coach and then that, that's the only way no um but but i'm kidding about that although that would be nice if you listen to the show every day and, and hire me but i think uh, learning you have to learn from others you know and uh, tony robbins has talked about this in his books where you can model successful people uh, people who've done what you want to do so instead of trying to reinvent the wheel and figure it all out yourself, you maybe you can do it, but it may take a couple of years to figure out whatever. Why not find somebody who's done what you want to do and then shorten that learning curve down to a month or two months is a heck of a lot better than a couple of years. So that's, I think, the biggest thing for not just coaches, but for any entrepreneurs is you got to find out who has really done it, those successful people. And then you can model them. Doesn't mean that you copy them. You got to have your own voice and you've got to be authentic in your own style, but you can model certain things that they're doing. And that's a heck of a lot easier than trying to figure it all out yourself. It's like throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. It's not the best way to do it. Mm. Mark, can anyone hire you or do you have specific clients you take on? <laughs> Yeah, well, like I said, I work specifically with coaches. So when I, when I first started coaching, I didn't have a niche. I said, I want to help any entrepreneur. That's who I'll coach. You know, out of the millions of entrepreneurs in the world, I work, I'll work with anyone. And then the result was I didn't work with very many of them. And uh, what I did with my business, I realized that, okay, I got to focus and, and help a certain uh, niche or niche, as some people say, in the marketplace. So what I did was I looked and out of the clients that I did have, I had a couple that were bricks and mortar traditional business owners, and then I had a few that were clients, uh, sorry, coaches that were clients, and it was the coaches that I had as my clients that I really enjoyed those calls. I was bouncing out of bed in the morning, excited for those calls, and then not so much with the bricks and mortar type businesses. So I said, I'm going to stick to what I, I'm passionate about, what I enjoy doing, because that's the whole purpose of doing business. You should be doing what you enjoy doing. And I said, I'm going to work specifically with coaches. I gel with them. I resonate with them. I get what they're going through. I'm going to work. I'm going to be, for lack of a better word, a coach for coaches. So um, I work specifically with coaches. And there's certain types of coaches that I look for. So I'm looking obviously for uh, clients who are motivated. So I can't pick you up and carry you across the finish line. You got to want it. <laughs> I want you to be successful, but you got to want it bad too. Um, I want clients who like to have fun. You know, I joke around. I, I like to have fun with my clients because if business is serious all the time, then that's not good either. So um, I like to joke around it and, and I like clients who can laugh and can have fun when they're doing business. And I love clients that pay me what I'm worth and they pay on time, <laughs> which is <laughs> <laughs> Man, you ask on it. A lot. <laughs> and it wasn't always like that uh, sometimes I worked with clients that uh, for whatever reason didn't um, weren't paying um, they weren't paying it was my fault I wasn't charging enough when I first started like a lot of coaches but then they weren't able to always pay on time and uh, 
great people, but not my ideal clients. So I've um, consistently increased my fees over the last few years where every season or every, you know, six months I'm bumping those fees up. And um, it makes me a better coach when you're getting paid what you're worth, you, you do better, <laughs> better work with what you're doing. So I'm a fan of coaches charging what they're worth. We can hear you, Mark. So if you want to be with Mark, make sure you are ready for fun. Make sure you are not going to go on his back. You are able to really go to the finishing line on your own. <laughs> but maybe right. have fun. Okay, that's yeah. great. Well, if there's a client that, let's say, is 80% uh, into it, if they're not 100%, they're 80%. Well, in the past, I used to say, okay, well, I'll just put extra effort into it. I'll put 120% into it, and I'll drag them across the finish line. And it doesn't work like that. You know, if you you don't want to success bad enough. It doesn't matter who's coaching you. You could have Tony Robbins coaching you. And if you're just shut down and you're not into it, then you're not going to be successful or it's going to be hard. So uh, I've changed my thinking along the lines the last few years through trial and error, but I don't want to work with lukewarm, unmotivated people. Life's too short. I want to work with people who are fired up and they want it badly. I want it bad for them, but they got to want it bad too. Ooh. Yes. So where do we find this fabulous program, Mark? Uh, for any of my programs, naturalborncoaches.com is the best spot. I mean, I've got different pages and video training and stuff, but the easiest spots, if you go to naturalborncoaches.com, you can uh, see everything I'm doing. That's a central hub, uh, so to speak. Okay. Glad Mark is going to hang out and share more information about his journey with us. If you can relate to where Mark started his journey so far, if you just want to learn more about Mark and his coaching coaches uh podcast you can go to online success journey or listen to the extended version of his journey at online success journey if you are already at the journey by clicking on max you can even get more tips to help you with your own business to go further so check out max program so it was acceleration for clients coaching program yeah. Yeah, accelerateforclients.com will get you to it. That's my signature 12-week program. I have a one-on-one -on -one and a group um, program for Accelerate for Clients. So accelerateforclients.com will get you there as well. Okay, that's a wrap plan. Remember, success is a journey. Patience and Mark, join us in part two at onlinesuccessjourney.com. This is not the end of the journey. We hope you've enjoyed listening to part one and want to be sure you know there is a second part to this and every journey podcast at onlinesuccessjourney.com filled with even more success tips, uplifting stories, and even a bit of fun. There are dozens of episodes only available to the members of the Online Success Journey clan. Check out the website and click on Join the Clan for more information. Patience would like to thank you for listening to this podcast, and she has a free audio gift for you at her website. Go to OnlineSuccessStream.com for instant access to this gift. Of course, you know that listening to the journeys of others helps each of us chart our own path. So make sure you're subscribed to be notified as each new interview is posted. There are so many ways to stay connected to the online success journey and to listen in. And if you're enjoying the podcast, we appreciate your help in telling others. One of the best ways to share the benefit you get is to rate and review it at Stitcher and other sites by clicking the stars or completing the ratings form. By clicking thumbs up and leaving a comment on YouTube or liking and sharing the podcast on social media. To review the podcast within iTunes, Simply open iTunes to the podcast, click on Ratings and Reviews, then write a review. On behalf of Patience and until next time, thanks once more for listening. It is our hope that this podcast will guide you on your own online success journey.